The next thing we're going to do is create a new user on our database. We already have one user which is installed by default called sys that we just looked at. However, it's not a good idea to use the sys user on a database. This is because it has full access to the database and there is a risk that we could do something wrong. So we'll create a new user and then we can use that user to practice and learn our SQL. I'll step you through the process and by the end of this video, you'll have a new user created. First, we need to open a file. I've prepared a file for you that lets you create a new user on the database. So open up SQL Developer, click on the file menu at the top here, and then go to open. Now your screen might look a little different because I'm running this on a Mac and you might be running on Windows, but there should still be a file menu that you can click on and then go to open. Now there's a create user.sql file which I've included as part of this course. You'll need to save that onto your own computer and then browse to the location where you've saved it. Once you locate the file, double click on it or click on it once and then click on open. In a moment, the file here will be created. It has five lines here. I won't go into detail about what all of these lines do, but this will create a new user for you and give you the permissions to do what you need to do. The only thing to focus on here is the name of the user, which is called intro underscore user. And the password to log on is called my password. We'll need this in the next step when we set up the connection. Now, in SQL Developer, whenever we open a new SQL window like we have just now, we need to select which connection we want to use. We do this by selecting a value in the drop-down on the right here. Select the connection that you want to use. I'm going to select this user because this is my sys account. Now there are two buttons that we could use to run our script. The first is the run statement button, which is a big green play button here. This will only run a single line, which is not what we want to do here. The second button here is called run script, and this will run the entire file. This is the button we want to use. So once you've opened your file and selected your connection on the top right, click on this run script button. The output will appear at the bottom of the screen here. We can click and drag this window up to make it easier to read. What we should see is user intro user created and then four output results like this. If there are any other errors, let me know in the comments section. If you get errors such as insufficient privileges, it means that you're not logged in as a system account. If you get other errors, then let me know and we can work through them. Now, the final step of setting up this new user is creating a connection. This way, we can connect to the database using this user and not the system user. To do this, click on the green plus button on the top left here. This is the same screen as we use to create a sys connection. Now, we'll create one for the new user. The connection name can be whatever you like. I'm going to call it intro. The username is the username value from the script that we just ran, which is this intro underscore user here. And the password is this word here, my password from the script. That's because it's the password that we gave when we just created the user. We want to click save password so we don't need to enter it each time. We can leave the host name, port and XE the same. Once you've entered that in, click on the test button. It should say status success down the bottom. Once you've done that, click on save. And then click on connect. Once you click on connect, you should see a new window that appears here. It has the name of a connection at the top. And it means you can now work on your database as that user. So from now on, we'll use this intro connection to work on our database.